to me, the analogy is you're taking one key off the keyboard, and you, you know, and you're just changing a little bit of one thing, but the balance because we're talking about a, a whole panoply, a whole keyboard of different um, interacting factors involved in inflammation that makes it extremely complex and it has evolved to be balanced. It's evolved to turn on when you want to have protection from illness or injury and you need to turn it back off and messing with the, with a balance when, when the volume is, is up is a dangerous thing to do. Along comes this concept that nutritional ketosis um, the idea that ketones are an excellent fuel for the brain. We now know they're an excellent fuel for the heart. Um, uh, and uh, very likely, we haven't proven this, but it's very clear that from clinical response that they're an excellent fuel for the, for the uh, digestive tract. About 10 years ago, some scientists at the Buck Institute in California, which is a longevity aging institute, and it sounds like that's kind of fairy tale stuff, but this, the Buck Institute is, is populated by very, very rigorous scientists um, uh, looking at, at factors that, that increase, you know, improve aging and, and decrease oxidative stress and that their impact on aging. And they discovered that if they infused ketones into a mouse for just a day, so we're not talking about a ketogenic diet, we're not talking about long-term ketone exposure, they ex infuse ketones into a mouse to a level of one millimolar which is kind of at the low end of what we call nutritional ketosis, that one millimolar beta-hydroxybutyrate turned on genes that those mice had been born with, but as long as they fed them a carbohydrate-rich mouse child diet, those genes weren't active. When they infused beta-hydroxybutyrate, it altered, altered a class of hormones called histone deacetylases. Histones are acidic proteins that wrap around DNA. When it's tightly wrapped around your genes, your genes are sitting there doing nothing. If you allow them to unwrap by adding acetyl groups to the histone, then those genes become active. And the genes that are activated are genes that we all, I hope almost all, if not all of us, are born with that provide potent antioxidant defense. But they only turn on when you have beta-hydroxybutyrate available in adequate quantity that, and in the range of nutritional ketosis. A hormone is something that's made endogenously or consumed in the diet and circulates through the blood and alters the function of other tissues. Now, your liver, my liver, is making beta-hydroxybutyrate and it circulates through the, my body and activates my, my defenses against oxidative stress and inflammation. That's a hormone. A, a, a remarkable expansion in our perspective of human physiology. And by the way, this explains why Arctic explorers who went into the Arctic and followed the, the diet of the aboriginal people in the Arctic, the Inuit, could live on that diet for years at a time and not develop scurvy. So why do you need vitamin C? It's an antioxidant. But what if you have your own endogenous defenses that work just fine, you don't need vitamin C unless you eat carbohydrates, and then you need vitamin C because you shut off your defenses.